Welcome everyone. Um, you are in my basement. You're right underneath my kind of front stairs as you walk into my home. And uh, this is my wine cellar. Um, and we're here because this is where it all started. You know, we, uh, about four years ago, April, 2020, the heart of the pandemic when things were getting pretty gnarly out there um, and really quiet out there, um, people were still drinking a lot out there. And we were having a hard time conveying the stories of like, the great wines, the wines that inspire us, the wines that we keep in our homes that uh, that we want to share with our, our friends and family and loved ones uh, when their time is due. So that's why we're here. We've got six new wines that we continue to fight for, wines that we are proud of, wines that inspire us. And that's kind of what the Cellar Series is all about, you know? So, um, so thank you. Before I forget, thank you very much for playing along with us. Uh, Nick and I have a great time uh, doing this project and providing this product to you. Um, and it means a lot. So here we go. Let's jump in. Six new wines. Uh, Scar of the Sea. This is a producer that uh, husband and wife team that's making wines along the San Luis Obispo coast. Um, you know, and they've been making wines since I think 2012. And this is their 2023 uh, method tradition, method ancestral. Uh, Pinot Noir Rosé, you know, so great sparkling wine, very fresh, kind of a frothy kind of quality to the wine, um, super limited, you know, um, and brand new. I mean, this is a 2023, and it's April 2024, so it's fresh. Um, we're seeing so many great wines from California these days that are from, you know, people, you know, families, you know, couples, partners, people that are uh, really passionate about the, the, the product, and it just feels great to have tasted the wine, and ask the distributor, wait, there's only how many cases? And be like, let's take them. Like, this is too good to pass up. It's too good to not share and show you guys. So, great new California rose uh, sparkling Pinot Noir. So, Scar the Sea. They make great Pinot Noir and Chardonnay too. But um, we're gonna do the bubbles. Going to Sicily, um, a place I've never been, but like a place that I'm dying to go to. It's like about as high on the list as you can get for me. Um, this is Cento Passi, and this is their Cattarato. So, they're. Um, their single vineyard, high elevation uh, site. It's, it's called Terre Rosse di uh, Giabascio. And that's the name of the site. You know, the, uh, and the site is important because these vineyards used to belong to the mafia. Um, like a lot of Sicily used to belong to the mafia in one way or another, like through, uh, well, you know how it works. I don't need to explain how the mafia works, but I got, um, this wine is also dedicated to um, a man named Pio Latore. Uh, who was assassinated and he was an advocate to uh, uh, you know, kind of rid Sicily of the mafia and all of the damage that they were doing and like like several others you know kind of was silenced in a way and so this is kind of a dedication to uh, to those who fought to kind of free uh, Sicily in a way so an amazing project um, but the wine in the bottle is, is fantastic you know so it has this kind of herbal note to it you know Cattarato and Sicilian whites are Truly Mediterranean whites that remind me of Greek whites, um, you know, Southern Italian, other Southern Italian whites, like they're really, really lovely. So golden in the glass, um, great with grilled seafood, seafood pasta is like, wow, fun wine and just special wine. So uh, going to Opino. So we work uh, with uh, Opino um, with their red wines usually, but we tasted the, the Beaujolais Blanc, 100% Chardonnay from Northern Beaujolais, where the granitic soils meet the limestone soils that great divide in France where Chardonnay kind of stops and Gamay and Syrah start. Um, this is from right along that, that little fault line, really, really cool area. So uh, yeah, the guy doesn't make a whole lot of wine. Um, there's not a whole lot of wine uh, for this particular uh, bottling in the state of Minnesota. And we took kind of the lion's share of it for this feature as we often do. Uh, great, great, great Chardonnay. So um, yeah. Moving on to, uh, uh, you know, Sparbatello, and this is a, a wine that is, you know, from a person called Castello di uh, Stefanago, and this property, um, this all organic uh, property, is along the Po River, uh, south of Milan, um, this area called Pavia, and it's Pinot Nero, a Pinot Noir, and, like, it has this lovely, like, rosé, like, ruby color, it's the most gorgeous color in the glass, and I'm, I've been thinking a lot about the color of wines recently um, and how important it is for me to kind of enjoy the color of a wine. So it is light. It is fresh. It has so much flavor to it. I adore this wine. Um, yeah, brand new in the shop, brand new to the state. Like, it's a really, really cool wine from 
kind of uh, you know outside of Milan, which we don't see a lot of wines from. So, um, Piemaggio. We're going. We're staying in Italy, but we're going south to uh, to Tuscany, um, and this is uh, in the Chianti Classico zone. Piemaggio is important to Neil Rosenthal, um, a really serious wine partner and importer, uh, you know, kind of colleague of ours, and you know, Neil Rosenthal also has uh, you know Monte Bertine, which in my opinion might be the great the greatest of the uh, of the Chianti Classico producers. And he also has um, uh, La Bonche, and La Bonche is this amazing uh, woman who uh, is making wines as well. So, like, he already had two, like, of the best. And he, like, uh, uh, they, you know, the Rosenthal Group added a third, and I was like, shit, it's like, I gotta figure this out. And I was talking to my buddy Charlie Broder and Mark McCondy, and they're like, Pete, the wines are rocking. I mean, they're pure, they're expressive, they're classic, um, and they have great, great fruit to them, and... I have loved working with this this bottle in the Fiorai uh, Chianti Classico bottle from Piemaggio. So 2019, really, really important vintage. Um, like, I have already bought uh, a handful of bottles of, of this wine to go like this, you know, and drink them over the course of the next decade uh, because these wines are awesome out of the cellar. You know, just, they're really, really wonderful wines. Finishing up with Tom Kennefick. Um, I can't remember what block Tom Kennefick lived on, but I think he was on Lincoln. I don't know, maybe up by Holly or Fairview or something like that. Like he was from the neighborhood. I remember talking to him. Tom has passed recently, um, unfortunately, but Tom was St. Paul guy, Mac Groban guy, and went out to San Francisco. Became a neurosurgeon, quite successful. Um, and as many Bay Area doctors do, they like wine and drink wine and sometimes buy vineyards. And he bought a really, really important estate uh, and stretch many, many years ago um, up in Calistoga, like up by Chateau Montalena and, you know, kind of the very northern tip of the Napa Valley where it's, it's warm up there. You know, it's uh, a special uh, area for growing uh, Cabernet. So this is not Cabernet Sauvignon, it's Cabernet Franc. Um, it's 2018 and it's a single, uh, it's from the estate, you know, it's kind of a single vineyard uh, 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 wine here, but it is not like wines from the Loire. It's not like... Bordeaux. I mean, this Cabernet Franc is from Napa. You know, there is depth and concentration and generous fruit to it. Um, it is what it is, and I love what it is, and I love uh, being able to kind of remember my memories with, with Tom Canafic and uh, drinking his wines over the years. So, a great connection. We try to make connections with this uh, this six pack product, and we continue to kind of be able to do that and share that with you with our tasting notes and kind of our intentionality behind it also. Welcome back to my cellar. Um, you know, uh, happy fourth anniversary cellar series. You drive me crazy in all the right ways um, each month. And thank you to Nick Thomas, the man behind the camera, my great production partner in this. And uh, we hope you can pick it up uh, this week and enjoy enjoy this month's feature. So thanks again, and uh, and we'll we'll see you next month.